Hey everybody, I'm going to be doing a reverse unboxing of my copy of Gloomhaven. Uh, it's a board game I've been pretty hyped about for a while. Um, we actually finally just played our first session of it uh, last night and uh, had a lot of fun. Um, it's a it's pretty, a pretty impressive game. So this is, uh, I've got the Gloomhaven game plus I bought uh, the wooden trays and inserts and sorting trays here for uh, from Broken Token. Uh, there's a bunch of other companies that have made some. Uh, this one was pretty highly reviewed, uh, so I went with this one. I got it on a Black Friday sale. Uh, it's really nice sorting trays that keep everything really well organized because there's a lot of pieces in this game, and uh, this kind of helps make the setup and takedown of when you're playing the game much much smoother, getting everything back in the box and ready to play uh, for the next time. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of show how everything goes back in the box and talk about the pieces as I go. Uh, so this game was actually, just the game by itself, not counting the, the insert trays, was uh, t between 20 and 22 t uh, pounds shipped to me uh, in this giant box. Uh, and it's only going to weigh, you know, I'm sure it weighs m much more now with the trays. I haven't, uh, I haven't weighed how much the, the wood trays actually weigh. Uh, I also went through and um, I sanded and stained and uh, <laughs> coated with a polyurethane uh, all of the trays here. So they're not normally this dark of a brown. It's normally kind of a light uh, balsa or birch kind of color. And uh, But I went through and coated these and made them look real nice and sanded them up. So it looks really cool. I just uh, like having little projects to do like that. And it was pretty fun. But anyway, so uh, I'm going to show everything goes back in the box here. So this is the giant base of the box. Um, there are 17 different characters in this game, uh, different characters or classes that are in the game. Six of them are unlocked from the beginning. It's a four-player game, so you pick four out of the, out of the starting six. So you've got choices. Um, each of the characters are going to come in a little box. They'll have all their information on there. It has a symbol for each character, and it's got their character stat sheet, cards, tokens, all that jazz are all in here. Uh, there's a notepad for each character where you track their EXP and perks that they've unlocked and stuff like that. Um, pretty cool. So there's these are the two that I'm not currently uh, using at the moment. And then all of these are characters that we have yet to unlock. And they all have a, a seal on them. So uh, when you fulfill certain conditions in the game, usually when, when a certain character completes their personal quest card that they've drawn, uh, they'll retire that character and it'll say, hey, you now unlocked this symbol character, uh, you can play this new character, and so then you'll draw a new character and keep continuing with the same campaign, uh, just with the new characters, your old one's retired, and you pick up where you left off with the rest of the party, and you've got a new person who's joined. Uh, there's all the characters, I guess, are, they're, they're technically mercenaries, so there's going to be characters coming in and out of the party as they go. Um, you can actually play with technically more than four people, just not consecutively, and have different players switch in and out and continue with the same campaign uh, interchangeably. Uh, as the game does a good job of keeping characters uh, caught up if they fall behind once they reach certain mild milestones and leveling up the town. Uh, so anyway, so here's all the, the character boxes. I could talk all day about the game mechanics, so I'm not going to do that for this video. Uh, so these all just going to go back in here in the box. These are all the currently unused characters. Uh, now the characters that are in use come with these cool, the, the token, the broken token tray comes with these really cool little tote trays for each character class. Uh, everything that you need for that character fits in here nice and perfectly. Um, so you've got all of your attack modifier and small size cards fit in here. Um, I've got the ones that are currently being used sleeved over here and the ones that I haven't um, leveled up and unlocked yet in, left in the bag. Um, you've got little punch out tokens used for tracking things. Uh, I haven't punched these ones out for this character yet. And they go in these little trays here. Um, I think you can technically fit your mini in here, uh, but it makes it a little cramped. Uh, so I just keep the minis in the boxes. Um, it's also got your you know, character ability cards in here and you keep your larger size cards in this little compartment. Uh, you've got this thing, which is uh, keeps track of your HP and your uh, experience points. There's little slider dials. You can keep track of everything that fits right in there. 
Uh, you've got your little notepad sheet where you keep track of all your stuff for your character, all your experience points and perks that you've unlocked and stuff like that, what items you have, gold, point, gold coins you have. Uh, then there's your little character bio sheet, uh, which has your uh, your stats on here. It shows you how much HP you have, depending on what level you are. And it has a, kind of a little cheat sheet for the rundown of how a turn plays out uh, and your options of what you can do each turn and how the game plays. So you have a reference guide on there. Uh, and it shows a little, you know, you'll have this on the, on the board. And uh, it has a little arrow so you can keep your discarded pile on this side, your lost cards on this side, active cards up here, condition status effects. So you have a little tray here to put them on the, on the card. So everything all has its own place. Uh, so there's four of these trays, one for each of your active uh, party members, and they stack really nicely, like that, with everything in there. They just stack in a nice little cube there. And there's another little notepad for the, for the party sheet and accomplishments. Uh, you just keep that on top. It fits in there nicely. So all of that will go in here next to the character boxes. Uh, then next to that, you've got your minis. So each of those character classes has their own miniature, come in a little tiny box with the character. And uh, of course, as you unlock them, you'll get the minis for those characters as well. Uh, these ones aren't sealed, so you can technically peek, but yeah, it's fun not having spoilers and you know, having the excitement of unlocking a new character and getting to see it for the first time. So I haven't peeked at these other than the ones for the starting characters. So there's uh, all the miniatures there. So that tray is just going to kind of go in there next to that. Let's see. All right. Um, then on the other side here, all of the monsters have little cardboard cutout standees and uh, they have their own little action cards. All of those go in here. Uh, these boxes for each of the monsters, these boxes came with the uh, broken token insert. These weren't in the original game. These were something that came with the extra insert. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I picked this one, because it came with these really nice printed boxes uh, for each of the each of the enemies. Um, they're all sorted by class, so there's archer, but there's different races of archer, or different types of archers here. There's the bandits, there's the city ar city guards, and stuff like that. Um, and all those are all those fit in here for each one and they fit their sleeve too I went through and sleeved all the cards and they still fit in here with everything and I can sort all the monsters here alphabetically uh, You've got a box for all of the bosses and a box for all of the monsters attack modifier cards that you it's the deck that they use for uh, Determining how much damage they do for each attack and they all share a deck for that uh, So they all fit in here Really cool nice tray uh, There's little gaps in the bottom so you can kind of poke the boxes out if you can't get a grip on them. Really nice. That all goes on this side over here. Let's see. Goes right there. Uh, then over in this corner, we've got this little tray. Uh, these little circles here are for uh, summoned creatures. So you can summon like familiars and different little whatnots. I know the like the rat character is like a psychic rat rogue type character that can summon a rat swarm um some of them can some of the characters can summon like a magic uh ally or spirit that helps them around or uh the tinkerer has like a this kind of a little decoy robot thing that just goes out and takes hits so you'll use these for your summon creatures to move around on the board there's tracker tokens for them in here and all kinds of different tokens Let's see so that's going to go down in here Uh, these are the stat sheets for all of the enemies. So they come with these cool little envelopes. So depending on what level character you're, you're what level scenario you're fighting, uh, the enemies will be different levels. So it's got from zero all the way to seven. And depending on what level it is, you make that one face up. So here's the level one guys. And it'll show you the stats for the level one character. This is a bandit guard. Um, the silver side is for a standard enemy, the gold side is for an elite enemy, um, and then uh, as they take damage, the miniatures have little numbers on them, and you can you put those on the envelope here in the little portion, or no, I'd say quadrant, but it's not four of them, the little slice for that character, so any HP damage or status effects will go on here, so like 
bandit number one takes three points damage. You put three tokens on number one there. And that's pretty cool. They come with envelopes for enough enemies for each scenario, and there's just a whole mess of cards for all the different characters, uh, all the different enemies that you fight. They fit in this little, little compartment. It goes right in there. Uh, then you've got the little trays, or the uh, stands for the standees. The little plastic uh, standees for the cardboard cutouts for the monsters. There's the white ones for the basic enemies and gold ones for the boss enemies or the um, elite enemies that are stronger. Those fit in there. There we go. All right, and then on top of that go the card trays. I've got two big card trays here. Uh, this one is for all the little tiny cards. So these are mostly, these are all going to be items. Uh, this is one of the early unlocked items, so it's not really a spoiler. Uh, so I'll, I kind of have these sorted with dividers that move around for when you unlock these. So there's like all the beginning items, level one items, level two items, etc. And as you go, you'll unlock more uh, more items that are available in the shops. Uh, those all stay in there. Um, you've got different attack modifier cards that could be um, caused from blessings and curses. So if you get cursed or a monster gets cursed, you add one of these to your deck. And uh, if, you, if you draw this from that deck, your attack does no damage. So that's like a critical miss kind of thing. Uh, at the same time, there's also blessings, which you can pay for blessings. Uh, you do a donation at the, the church or the, the temple in the main town and uh, before a mission, and you can get a blessing card added to your deck, and those will do, it's like a critical hit, they'll let you do uh, double your attack. So you can get those added to your deck. Um, and then once, you, once they pop up, uh, you remove them from the deck. Uh, so they're not a permanent effect, but if you do have one of each of those in your decks permanently, the uh, additional ones are one-time uses. Uh, there's also negative modifiers. Uh, so if you have certain equipment, they might be like a heavy armor or something like that that weighs you down a little bit, uh, or just has a negative penalty, sometimes those will make you add extra negative ones to your deck. Um, there's these cards here, which are uh, personal goal cards. Um, it's far enough, you probably can't read this anyway, but it's they'll give you a certain objective for that particular mission that you're doing um, and uh, just kind of a mini achievement to do during that battle and if you do that you unlock little check marks which uh, you can use those to unlock perks so uh, you'll get a new one of those for each quest that you go on and uh, you can just kind of do those as a side goal like hey pick up uh, as many gold coins as you can try to be the person to finish the last enemy I just kind of as a few examples, you know, don't let anyone die, stuff like that. Um, so just kind of personal quests to help you uh, unlock extra bonus stuff for fun. Uh, these ones are extra little random scenario cards. I'm not going to show these. I don't know if you guys if I'm gonna keep it a secret or not. Uh, but they are just other locations that aren't on the map uh, that you can do extra bonus quests at that you unlock just from doing certain things. Uh, then these in the back are. The blue ones are, I think, item plans. I don't want to look at it necessarily. Um, I think these ones are yeah, item plans where it's like a scroll or something like that that shows you, hey, this is how you make this type of item. And that unlocks all of the copies of that item that are in the other cards get to go in the shop. So you don't just get one copy of that in their treasure chest. You found the plans for how to make this so everyone can get one or multiple characters can get one. It's pretty cool. So all the cards fit in here, and these dividers are actually all removable. So you can take the dividers out and slide them around and adjust how big you need each compartment to be, depending on what you have in it. Really, really cool. Uh, really nice. So that goes in there. Uh, this one is for the larger cards, the normal, just standard playing card size. Um, over here we've got uh, some little player cheat sheet cards that show what all the different status effects and ailments do, um, and uh, just kind of a little reference guide on there. Let's see, right here, these ones are uh, road cards, so whenever you're going, um, traveling on the map from mission to mission, uh, going from town out to a dungeon or quest, 
or going between quests that aren't directly connected. You draw a road, a road card, and it does some sort of random scenario that you'll play out. You'll choose, do you want to do A or B, depending on what the, the text says, and it'll have a different effect on you. You'll either, either unlock something, it'll have a positive or negative effect on your party, something like that. Um, there's also the city cards, which are similar. Uh, these take place while you're in the city of Gloomhaven. You can do one of these, the party can do one of those. And uh, from what I've heard, they're mostly mostly more positive effects, more, more beneficial things versus being like attacked or something like that in the, in the road cards. Uh, back here we have these ones which are for creating random dungeons. So there's pre-made dungeons in the scenario book. Uh, you can also do random dungeons where you'll draw several cards and they'll show one of the tiles and then you draw a thing that has all the different monsters and then you match them up and those monsters go in those numbered spaces. Uh, and you'll draw several rooms and they'll get progressively harder as you go through. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, you've got personal goal cards. Uh, so these you draw whenever you first create a new character. You'll draw two of these and pick one. Uh, and this is your long-term retirement goal for that character. Um, so that's something that your character is trying to achieve and once you achieve that goal that character retires, uh, you'll unlock a new character class and you can choose to play that new character class or one of the other ones that have been unlocked and roll a new a whole new character. Um, and of course that character will get the benefits of whatever things have been unlocked by the party so far. So they'll be able to get caught up with the rest of the party almost immediately. Um, let's see, oh, then the, I have these are the road and city cards that haven't been unlocked yet. So you start with a certain number of uh, events unlocked as certain events occur, they're like, okay, now add I, you know, road card number 60 to the deck uh, because now this thing could happen because you did this. So the, just all of these extra cards in here that haven't been unlocked and put in the active deck yet. So as you go, more events are going to take place depending on what you've done in previous scenarios. So it's going to evolve like a like a D and D campaign will. So all those cards go in there. That's all of that stuff. Uh, now, next thing we've got these little trays that hold uh, terrain tokens or uh, terrain tiles. So these all have different uh, different stuff on each side. Um, you use these for making the terrain in the dungeons. You've got a little treasure chest. You've got barrels. You've got rocks, sarcophagus, doors, stairs, all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, so you use these to you know customize the the terrain of each dungeon and quest that you go through uh, and make it look interesting and give you little obstacles. So those trays go right there on top of the characters. Those fit neatly right there. I'm making a mess of it. All right, so those go there. Uh, next thing we've got uh, more overlay tiles. These are traps though. So you've got like bear traps, spike pits, um, you've got like a acid or ooze trap thing. There's like a some sort of bug or monster nest trap. Uh, there's little pressure plates that you guys can step on and like, oh, you step on this and it opens the door or something. So you have to have one character go stand on it and then have another character go through the door or unlock something. Pretty cool. So you use those as you're going through the missions. That'll go over there. We've got this big tray here. Uh, this is for, you've got your damage tokens in 1s, 5s, and 10s. You've got single coins, 5 coins. Uh, you've got the element tracker tokens. These are wood with different, uh, different symbols on them for the different elements. And uh, as you do different effects, or different uh, abilities, they'll be like, oh hey, you, you used a flamethrower for the tinkerer. Uh, it creates fire element and that kind of floats around in the environment and other people's attacks could possibly be like, hey, if you if there's a fire element, use it and that you get to your benefit on this attack. Or this gives you some effect by having that element active. Um, so you can kind of combo things together, make some neat tricks. Uh, we're playing the other day and uh, one of the characters was able to uh, create the uh, ice element and, uh, and then my character was able to use that to do something to buff the other characters. Uh, so we're able to kind of combo that together and help each other out, which is pretty neat. Um, I also went through on these, on the wooden trays, it's going to be probably hard to see on this. Um, I took a gold paint pen and I kind of filled in the, the pattern 
for each of the symbols for what goes in each tray. So it kind of tells you what goes in each tray. They've got the little stars for the damage tokens. They've got the little, you know, uh, octagon there is for, there for the coins that are that shape. Uh, so it just kind of shows you what goes in each of those spots. And I made them gold with a little paint pen, which uh, looks pretty cool. It actually looks really nice. It probably doesn't show up very well on the camera from here, but uh, it's it's a really nice little effect. Oh, I lost the coin there. Uh, so those all go there. Uh, next tray is similar. It's all the status effect tokens here. Uh, so these are all the different stat effects you can uh, have inflicted on you or the monsters. Uh, like there's poison with a little skull on it. Uh, there's like a, a boot with an arrow stuck in it for getting um, immobilized. Uh, there's a little bicep for getting strengthened up. Um, there's like a question mark for if your character gets muddled. Uh, there's a little explosion thing for being stunned, etc. And I did the same thing with these. There's the little symbols down here. I painted those gold, just to kind of have a nice little effect to it, so they stand out. Uh, it looks really cool. Yeah. So, of course, most of the time it's covered with tokens. You don't really see it, but I don't know. It's fun to do. <laughs> so what have you? Uh, so those go there. And I think that's most of the trays and stuff. Yeah. Okay. So then after that, you've got your books. So this big one that's spiral bound is the scenario book. This has all of the quest and missions that you're going to go and do uh, sorted by number. Uh, so whenever it says, okay, you've unlocked and do this mission, uh, this you turn to that page and unlock and do that mission. Um, so this is, for example, the first one that everybody does is the Black Pharaoh. And uh, you're going to go into this dungeon and fight a bunch of bandits. And so it gives you a little diagram for how to set up the, the terrain, where the enemies go, uh, where all the different tokens and uh, icons go, like the treasure chests and the monsters, where they go. And there's a little flavor text that tells you about the scenario uh, and then what you unlock when you complete it. It's pretty cool. Uh, it has a, it'll, all the information you need for that particular dungeon in there. And there's a ton of them in here. Uh, so that book is going to go in there. Uh, and I've got two other books. Uh, now depending on which edition of the game you've got, you may only have the rule book, uh, which is right here. Shows you how to play the game. And on the back it's got a reference sheet and uh, index for where they tell you how all these different things work. Um, so that tells you all about how to play. So that's going to go there. And then this is... Uh, Solo Scenarios book. So this is something additional to the second edition of the, of the Kickstarter that they did. Uh, second edition includes this. It's kind of like a, a book full of challenge missions. So there's one for each class. They're meant to be done once that class is level 5 or higher. And, um, and once you've, um, your party has already retired at least two characters. So it's meant to be done fairly far into the into the campaign, I'd say probably about maybe halfway through from what I've heard. Um, I haven't gotten to that point yet since we just started. Um, but So these are kind of a good challenge mission for each of those characters. So they're meant to be very hard. So it's once you've kind of mastered that character, how to use their abilities and you've unlocked new perks and the equipment for them, uh, you'll do this little solo challenge. Just You just play as one character, just that one particular class uh, by yourself. And uh, by doing it, you unlock a cool piece of gear for that character. Uh, so you'll get something exclusive to that character that'll kind of give you a benefit. It's kind of like a neat, you know, epic or elite gear for that character. Uh, so that's all that. Then you've got your board, which uh, this is uh, folds out like a traditional board game board, but this is actually just the map of the world. So you've got your your map of the area surrounding Gloomhaven, which is the little town, which is uh, kind of a port town down here in a bay, uh, has a big insert uh, blown up uh, view of the, of the town and all the different districts and stuff. There are little dots scattered throughout the map that have numbers on them. Those are different scenarios that you can do. So like number one, the Black Barrow is right here just north of town. And uh, as you unlock new scenarios, you're gonna actually be putting stickers on this map uh, showing the different places that you've unlocked and places that you've been. And there's a little check mark so you can check off once you've completed that quest. Uh, so these stickers are uh, semi-permanent. 
So when you put them on there, they're stuck to the map for good. And if you play this game again, you know, those stickers are already there, unlocked for, for the rest of, as long as you have the game. Uh, there is a third party that made some removable, peelable stickers uh, that I've ordered that haven't come in yet uh, that will let you reset the game, take all the stickers off, and have a fresh start. Uh, so if you ever want to start a brand new campaign without having anything unlocked, uh, or if you want to you know, resell your game or something like that and later down the road, you want to sell it, uh, so you haven't permanently defaced it by putting stickers all over it, uh, so you can reset that. Um, you also have little spots up here that have little cutout lines for uh, achievement stickers. So there's little banners and flags that you'll unlock by doing different achievements as a party, and those will unlock as you go. And uh, we'll just kind of show what achievements and different things that your party has done and accomplished. Uh, so these are all the sticker sheets here. There's also a, a set of <coughs> enhancement stickers, the little tiny dot stickers. These actually go on your attack cards. So you'll have like a bunch of plus ones, like, hey, I have an attack three, plus one, and you do an extra damage. Uh, I can add stun to this attack. See, stun's not on here. <laughs> stun's actually pretty powerful, so they don't have that on here. Uh, you can add jump to a movement, you can add the different elements, you can add curse, you can add poison, etc. There are little red hexes, so if you have an area of effect attack, uh, say it has, it'll do two hexes next to you, you can add a third hex or more, you can you know, actually add extra spaces and make your area of effect attacks attack a larger, larger zone. Uh, it's pretty cool. I like that they give you a lot of flexibility with upgrading your characters, which is pretty neat. You know, as you evolve, you unlock more of those more of those cards that are, that are in the bags for the characters. So your characters are going to get more interesting and have new attacks and abilities as they go. Uh, their attack modifier deck is going to be added and expanded upon as you go. Uh, yeah, so the board goes in here, right there. So I've got a nice flat surface there. I put the stickers, sticker sheets right there, right on top of the board where there's a nice flat, clean surface. And uh, then the last thing is all of the terrain tiles and map tiles. So these are all like puzzle pieces, basically. They all kind of fit together. The scenario book is going to tell you which pieces to grab. They've all got little index numbers on them, like this is J2A, and there's J2B on the other side uh, as an example. Uh, so it'll tell you exactly which pieces to get and where to put them. Uh, so those are all in here, all kinds of different sizes and shapes of, uh, of terrain tiles. And they're all double-sided with different different uh, areas on each side. Like this one's got kind of a stone hex tile, and this one's like a cave. This one looks like it's in like a forest. You've got another another cave there. There's another stone tile, and then this one's got a, like, kind of a wooden wooden boards like inside of a building. So there's a bunch of different uh, different styles of terrain in here. You can kind of mix and match uh, depending on what scenario you're doing thematically. And then you'll have the little, uh, the little extra terrain tiles that go on top of this to add like you know, barrels and bushes and traps and what have you. It's pretty cool. They also have ingrained in here. There's uh, engraved, I'm sorry, uh, engraved in here. There's a little uh, legend that shows you uh, how to stack these back up and put them back in this thing so they sort and fit in the tray properly. Um, I, I took a Gundam marker and filled those with ink so that it's more legible since I did the wood staining so it's easier to see. Uh, so yeah, all that's been in there. And that goes on top. Right there. And that's it. And the lid just goes on top. That's everything. So it all just kind of fits in there real neat. Uh, I really, really like these trays. They, they definitely sped up the uh, amount of setup and takedown each time you play without having everything in like little Ziploc baggies or piles. and They just go all over the place when you, if you shake the box wrong. And everything's just in its nice little place. It's all sorted and organized. Uh, they're in there pretty good, so nothing's going to move around if you shake the box. Uh, it's really, really nice. Uh, I really recommend the, getting some sort of organizer tray if you get this game. And it's just a really, really cool game. Looking forward to playing this for quite a while. Uh, this is a lot of scenarios to do, and i um, looking forward to having fun with it. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. So yeah, this is Blue Maven.